Modern Warfare 2 is perhaps one of the most iconic games, if not the most iconic game, of not only the Modern Warfare franchise, but Call of Duty franchise to date. Whether the player enjoyed the addictive multiplayer, spec ops, or campaign the most, that's up for personal interpretation. However, the narrative that Modern Warfare 2 drove home was not only gripping and intense, but also has cemented its legacy with some of the most compelling missions in the entire Call of Duty franchise's history, not just Modern Warfare. Often considered the most controversial mission in all of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2's No Russian Mission saw you, the player, acting as CIA operative Joseph Allen embedded within Vladimir Makarov's cell, the Inner Circle, hoping to gain the upper hand on the villain. The mission made headlines for its over-the-top visuals at the time and was considered unnecessary by many, so much so to the point that there were main menu startup options offered to entirely skip the mission in full. While mowing down hundreds of unarmed Russian civilians divided many in the mainstream who were first introduced to Call of Duty in this manner, it turns out that many even internally were incredibly unsure of the mission's inclusion. Today, we're going to discuss the near brush with an alternate history of No Russian as we examine the true story behind No Russian's development, the internal debates that happened at Infinity Ward, and even a few concepts that were simply left on the drawing board that have finally surfaced nearly 10 years later. Snami Bok. No Russian shock factor has been universally known for nearly a decade, with the initial start of that mission proclaiming, remember, no Russian. To avoid the use of any Russian that would link the attack back to Russians themselves, and instead pin it on another nation, which we see by the end of that mission as the United States, as Joseph Allen's true identity is made and he becomes the fall man. The mission sees you walk the length of an airport terminal, mowing down civilians with no way to really fight back, and the most opposition you find as a player is a few security guards who naturally are no match for automatic rifles, machine guns, and shotguns. The mission is intense and graphic, and while you can play the entirety of the mission without shooting a single round yourself, the outcome is still the same. It was a mission that was gripping and made international news calling for bans, boycotts, and more, but was a mission to set up the entire story arc of the coming conflict in Modern Warfare 2's campaign. The purpose of the mission was for Makarov to deceive the world on an unthinkable level, to pin an act of unspeakable horror on an American citizen, R. Joseph Allen, and to promote the nationalism needed for Makarov's cause to attack the United States in World War III. While the rest of the world was polarized by the mission, either in absolute shock that it was a playable mission to begin with, or in accepting and understanding the mission's role in the game, it turns out much of the Infinity Ward team was also torn on the inclusion as well. A recent article by Game Informer containing interviews with the returning team working on this year's Modern Warfare Soft Reboot took a bit of a look into the mindset following the design of that mission in particular, offering a rare glimpse into the minds of the very people who brought this mission to the world. Art director at Infinity Ward, Joel Emsley, is returning from Modern Warfare after his stints at Respawn Entertainment and his work on the Titanfall series, and is a returning pillar of the original Modern Warfare era Infinity Ward cast, and in this interview with Game Informer, he says that no Russian polarized the studio. There is a side of the studio that felt it should be played from the perspective of a security guard that got caught up in it, then there was the other side that liked it the way it was going. I remember doing all the civilians for no Russian, as he was an artist and model creator, and I just wouldn't. There was a point in time where we were discussing how gory we would get with the people who were getting hit. I pulled back and I said, you don't need it. People are getting tagged and their squibs are going off. It's all good. He then described how he was ultimately influenced by his wife, who was sure the visuals needed the extra level of shock. He described it as, my wife looked at it and she's all like, where's all the blood and guts? And I'm like, we didn't need to do it. And he further explained, she called me out. She calls me on my bullshit. It's pretty funny. She looks at things in a different lens. She's a lawyer. She doesn't mess around, but she's a good gut check on that stuff. The internal discourse sets the stage for the first of what ifs in terms of an alternate vision of the mission that the world never saw. As Joel Ensley mentioned, there was an initial idea of playing the mission through the eyes of a security guard, one who would try and ultimately fail to stop the coming threat, but it would visualize the horrors of the acts in a different light. A light that would paint the picture, but not encourage players to take part in the actions. As with all other ideas that were brought to the drawing board back during the design of Modern Warfare 2, and what we'll examine here in this video, we'd have no real idea how those versions would be received, whether the controversy would live on as much as it does to this day, or if it would be a better received version compared to the variation that we've known of for a decade. 
Other ideas that were brought to the table can be found in the form of older interviews with, at the time, the designer of the level himself, Muhammad Alavi. In 2012, Alavi gave an interview that granted a bit more access into the mind behind the level, stating that for the level, we were trying to do three things. So why Russia was attacking the US, make the player have an emotional connection to the bad guy Makarov, and do that in a memorable and engaging way. In a first-person shooter where you never leave the eyes of the hero, it's really hard to build up the villain and get the player invested in why he's bad. This ideology also explains why the previously mentioned storyboard idea of playing a security guard wouldn't do the vision justice and why the other storyboard ideas were eventually scrapped. You can't truly understand how vile and evil a character is until you are thrown in the exact shoes tasked with doing the exact same unspeakable things. There are multiple variations described that recount the ideas of not only playing as just a security guard, but also playing as a civilian simply trying to flee the premises, or the idea of playing the scene out as if it were a movie or a cutscene, telling the story and painting the picture, but without the player's involvement. These ultimately were turned down because of the design principle needed to capture that raw emotion that made you want to go against Makarov with everything. Alavi stated, Watching the airport massacre wouldn't have had the same impact as participating or not participating in the case of simply rolling with the mission, not lifting your weapon as you're able to do. Being a civilian doesn't offer you a choice or make you feel anything other than the fear of dying in a video game. He continues on by saying, What's relevant is that the level managed to make the player feel anything at all. In a sea of endless bullets you fire off at countless enemies without a moment's hesitation or afterthought in relation to every other standard mission in Call of Duty, the fact that I got the player to hesitate even for a split second and actually consider his or her actions before pulling that trigger, that makes me feel accomplished. One storyboarded idea that made it the furthest out of all the others discussed was that of an alternate ending for the mission entirely, where it went pretty far, but not as far as the no Russian that made it to launch. In that same interview, Alavi recounts, the first iteration of the level only had the massacre at just outside the elevator door. Beyond the first set of escalators, the combat would begin, and it felt cheap and gimmicky. It felt like we were touching on something raw and emotional, and then shying away from it just as soon as it became uncomfortable. This variation could be interpreted two different ways that we'll of course never know for sure. One of which being that maybe the police forces pushed back on the inner circle's march through the airport, sparing countless hundreds of lives in the in-game death toll, but there also could have been that arc where Alan's never found salvation from international framing could have been Alan himself shooting at the inner circle, taking down some of them in the process. Those details are never quite specified, but alas, still make for an interesting fuel for thought when considering the design intent. Alavi and co. insist that this was never a ploy to garner attention via headlines using shock value or anything of the like, but the weight of those statements alone are in the eye of the beholder. However, I do personally find it fascinating that something so memorable, so controversial, had these and presumably many other attempts to lessen the blow brought to the table, but ultimately the vision is what we see it as today. We see it in an attempt to bring the raw emotion out of players and to understand what they're doing in the most explicit way possible to set up the gravity of the situation in the game's storyline. How different it would have been simply played through the eyes of a guard or civilian? How different it would have been if there was no gore with each landed shot? How different it would have been if it ended at the escalators? Would the mainstream world or even perhaps gamers have a different outlook on a mission and its overall importance to the storyline? I suppose we'll never know, but they offer a very unique opportunity to see past face value and how, like many who played it, the mission weighed heavy on those who even designed it. With Modern Warfare launching in just a short span of time now at this point, gameplay of campaign has yet to be released as of creating this video, but from first-hand experience seeing it all the way back in May at a behind-closed-doors press event, there were scenes that go pretty far, and we're told that's not even the worst of it. Campaign gameplay director Jacob Minkoff says, I could come up with a list of like eight different things that it could be in reference to the shock value or that mission in relation to what will stand out for modern warfare so with what we know of on deck already and going even a little further modern warfare this upcoming year may be in for some similar situations while we won't know for sure what the game entails until october 25th for sure the question certainly lingers on how far the game will go and if history will repeat itself no russian still certainly holds the title for the most controversial scene in a call of duty game but will it hold? Anyways, that's where we're going to conclude today's video of a retrospective look at the most controversial scenes in Call of Duty's history and what almost was for some other outcomes that would have certainly changed the course of the game and the reception drastically. What do you think of the outcomes? Do you like one better than the other or do you see no Russian as it is as necessary? And 
even if you're adamantly against it, do you see it as a necessary evil to convey the storyline and the gravity of what each situation holds? Whatever it is, I'm curious to know your thoughts, so drop them down there in the comment section down below. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty. While we pass the time for Modern Warfare, we do have a couple of series here that I'm going to kick starting that I'm extremely happy to bring you guys, and we'll have some retrospective looks at some of the highlights of the Call of Duty franchise overall, and also we still have things like Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare content still up on deck, so if you're interested in any of that, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. I practically live on both those, so if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But all that's in out of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. My name has been Espresso, I'll see you guys later, take care, and peace. Thank you.